veteran educators often leave teaching to serve in other areas. Ms. Daphne Rogers, our guest on this edition of Reflections, is one such. After teaching, she went on to serve as the first administrator of the National Cultural Center. Ms. Daphne Rogers. Okay, Ms. Rogers, tell me, first of all, where you grew up in Guyana, where you went to school, how did you get involved in teaching in the first place? I grew up in, Ga in Georgetown, <clears throat> and I went to school at St. Philip's Anglican School under Mr. R.G. Jones, which is um, Agnes, Mal Agnes Jones' father. And after I got school leaving, I went to Washington High School. And from the Washington High School, I got my certificates. And then I went, look, I did a slight term of commercial, but I didn't really like it. And then I went, after that, Mr. Miller, who was attached to the Smith Church, he heard Mrs. Pollard, who was working there, she was on leave. And he asked Mr. H.S. H. S. Jackson to have me as a young pupil teacher there. And I spent a year or a little more than a year. And then I was appointed as a pupil teacher to the Dolphin Government School. It wasn't Dolphin then, yes, Dolphin Government School. Um, so tell me, um, there were, were there a lot of government schools in Georgetown at the time? No, no. Okay. That was the major one. Mm -hmm. And it was like a model school, because model in the sense that it had classrooms and it had everything because it was the school that they brought trainee teachers from the training college to do their work, their exams, uh, their um, practical. practical teaching. Uh -huh. So um, you go into teaching, and I'm going to presume that teaching at that time, that would have been in the primary level. Primary. And what subjects would you have been teaching we taught all, but actually I was attached to what was known as the scholarship class, that common entrance class. English, um, um, mathematics, social studies. Mm -hmm. They didn't do science and those no things in those days. days, but a lot of, a high level of English was done. Mm -hmm. And the children then, if they passed, they went to bishops or queens, the high level, or they could take an interview and an exam, an external exam, and still get into bishops. And, and many of them did it, much to my delight. <laughs> All right, so you taught as a pupil teacher in the primary uh, level yeah. for that early part of your um, sojourn in education. Um, which year was this? This was in what year? 1965, 67, 67. 1967, uh -huh. okay. Um, so having gone through that period, you were then, I think, given a scholarship to go abroad. Was no, this not happened? right then, mm -hmm. not okay. right. I taught okay. there, mm -hmm. and then, but I wasn't a trained teacher. Mm -hmm. But then the government instituted a one-year training course for teachers who had been in the system for some time, but did not, were not trained. Mm -hmm. And we were given that opportunity. And I entered the government training college. It was a one year. And after the one year, I was um, doing, I, Edna Cadogan, one of the senior mistresses, she got a scholarship. And she was leaving, and Mr. Vaughn Cook, who was the principal then, asked if I would substitute as an art and craft teacher in her absence. And this I did for right through until 1969, when I was, then it was when I got my scholarship to go to Calgary, Calgary University, and I, that's where I got my B.A. 
in the teaching of education, elementary education. So what was it like going into this new environment out of Guyana? First of all, I'm sure it was, would have been cold. It would have been new people that you were meeting. And of course, you were learning new things. Yeah. What, how, what was the experience like? I thought it was enriching and exciting for me. And then because I went as an adult student, and at that time I had to take an examination for adult students to see if we will succeed in the course. And I certainly did well, and I was given the opportunity to, to carry on. And um, my experiences were, because in Guyana I was at the theater guild, doing a lot of drama and that sort of thing. And I went with a wide creative experience to the college. And some of the things that they exposed to me, I knew and some I didn't know. But what enriched my thing was that when you didn't know, even though you didn't know, there was some background um, thing that you never thought you were going to want to use, come forward, and I did well in the um, courses. The uh -huh. um, so you come back to Guyana with your training, and what happens? Then I, was re I went back to the government training college, mm -hmm. where I worked for a long time. Um, and then I was working after the government training college. I, I was seconded to the um, Lillian Dior Training College for about a year or so, and I worked there, and then I was seconded to the Department of Culture under Miss Dolphin, and that is where my exposure and my experience and development really flowered and blossomed. So you're moving out of education to a certain extent, yes. and you're moving into more practical things, almost practicing or putting all this stuff that you had learned into practice. Yeah. What happened then? Uh, because of that, I was um, given the opportunity to be in charge of the dance school on the Lavinia Williams. And that is where that experience came because then I was able with what the, ex the exposure I had at Theatre Guild on the Cecil, Cecil Robinson and Carlotta Kroll in costuming. I was able to carry it over there now with the skills that I had in Canada. Mm -hmm. And we did very good. And that is where I became this ex costume expert for dance. And, and then I, after that, I mushroomed into Mashramani for children, mm -hmm. the children's Mashramani. And I worked there for a little while. Okay, so in 72, 1972, Ghana hosts Carafesta, the first ever Carafesta. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that experience and what were you doing at that point? At that time, I was still doing it. I was doing costumes, not costumes for the artists, costumes for dance, and things like that in 72. Because it was here, and we did everything for children. I remember um, Lavinia was in charge of the primary section, and I worked with her, and um, we did the costumes all types of costumes at that level. In Mrs. Miss, Mrs. Robinson was in charge also of the costume and design section with Miss Broodhagen, who did all of that. Marjorie Broodhagen. They made, they designed the costumes, put them out, and we were able to I was able to work on them with um, thing. Eileen Puran was also a very instrumental person in at that period when we were doing costumes. In '72, I think also the cultural center got built. Yeah. Uh, and I, if I remember rightly, it was not fully completed when Carafesta no, happened. It was not. So tell us a little bit about that. What 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 took place? I was in the background then. I was not uh, 
Frank Pilgrim, Billy Pilgrim, Miss Dolphin, they, <coughs> they were the organizers and people who think. But I worked in the background with the artists and the people that came from Burbies and over the country, you know, and the Amerindians. I knew I had a lot in charge of getting their costumes ready and things like that. You were to, of course, take on the administration of that building. Mm -hmm. I mean, alongside your work as administrator of the dance school, yes. you were to become administrator of the National Cultural Center, and I think you served there for 17, 17 years. years. Um, tell me a little bit about what that entailed. Now, <clears throat> it was very enriching. It entails knowing about culture, Whichever culture is coming, you know, you read up on, you know about it. And then you try to, under Mr. Burnham, who was very keen at the time that the National Cultural Center should be the cultural center, you know, the cultural forum for the Caribbean. And I could remember people from Trinidad coming to look at the design and the work that we did. Now, in that, you had, we had, you had, it, the administrative par, part was that we had the um, technical staff, you had to know something, you know, about the techniques that they're going to use, sound, light, stage. Well, I was more comfortable on stage, simply because. <laughs> you had come from the background of the theater right, guild, yes. yes. And um, I knew something of some, and so that, there was a plus for me. You know, I was able to relate to the men and things like that. Mm -hmm. Then we had light. Well, we had people in light which they had assigned. So I didn't have, I just had to see that it was well done when the, the, um, the theater, when the um, principals for the cost, for the production scheme that they were there. That part I found very educating because for every production, we had what is known as a production meeting. And in that meeting, it was every senior member of the stage, light, song, um, the ushers and everything. And we were able to sit with the producers and they were able to explain to us what they want and those, and we were able to see how we could get it. It was harmonious and thing, but also it had a lot of friction sometimes, but people understood that you were working for excellence and you tried your best so um, thing. then we had another section, the social section, which is with the ushers. We had Ms. Dolph, the Department of Culture had invited a number of ushers. I remember um, I went, when I went there, the ushers system was already installed. And you had Ms. Gwen Paris, who was in charge. And after Gwen, we, she had them trained and we used to bring in people to come and see them walk, see them talk and, you know, show people to their seats. Um, Miss Embosi, Mrs. Embosi was very, very instrumental in that Embosi. with us, yes. And Elsie, Elsie Kroll also was very, very helpful at that time because I didn't know much about the ushering and that part. But we quickly enjoyed it, and the girls settled in. We had a chief usher who would, was on the permanent staff, and she would have the lists and things like that. Get in contact with people when needed. Yes. And then Over those years, you, you, I'm sure you saw many, many productions. Oh, yeah. um, are there any that stand out for you particularly? And it's the Song of Music. The Song of Music. The Song of Music, yeah. it was. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh -huh. And I really enjoyed working there. But there were many I, I other productions. There were a lot of productions, I think, over that period that came from, like, China. Oh, yes. The Chinese extravaganza. Mm -hmm. 
dance, <coughs> song and dance. We had that. And we had from Korea too, mm -hmm. Korea and that. And another thing that was very enriching to the staff and me was that all the embassies used to have their um, day, their um, independent day, they a day there, and used to come to the rented the cultural center for the cocktail, party. for the cocktail parties or whatever Activity activities they, they had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that was good. Also, I had liked, I enjoyed and learned from Genesis of a Nation that was done by the University of Guyana. Very, very informative, mm -hmm. you know, and you were able to conduct yourself in the right way. And we also had what is known as a VIP lounge, where all the dignitaries will gather there and we'll serve them with light refreshment or let them relax until it is time to go back to their places on stage and things like that. Uh -huh. Over the years, how have you seen administration of facilities like the Cultural Center change? It has changed very much through the, 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 the I, I don't think the um, one, they, they need to look at some of the productions. Not every production must come to the cultural center. Or if they're going to come, then we of the cultural center, along with the producers, must decide on the quality, you know, and the characterization that we are looking out for. And I, in my time, I found it was very, very harmonious. People didn't mind saying what they want. Um, we also had instituted the dress code. Why? Because at that time, when people came, it was a one cultural center. And when people came back, from England and holiday, they came dressed properly, dressed as people, theater goers should go, you know. And we found that the local young ones would want to wear anything, you know, and they never looked right, you know, the wrong shirt or pants, cut off pants and that sort of thing. And we felt to keep the standard, we will put the institute a dress code. And that helped to stabilize what we stood for. And people still came and said, I remember this place, how nice it was and how we were able to, to um, think. Then Miss Dolphin had instituted a thing for me. I would stand, people thought we were dressed up and looking at dressed up, we weren't doing <laughs> we were doing a social duty, <laughs> seeing no problems because, as I told the ushers, we were the first people they will meet before we, they went into the cultural center. And if there's a problem, we must be able to solve it, you know, and the ushers must be able to speak to them or refer them to me or things like that. And you would, you would attend most of the productions? Most, every, nearly every one that I was there. <laughs> it was like a new room, and you, you always felt something will go wrong. Yeah, you, know? you wanted to make to sure. Make that sure that in the yeah. event that it did, you could fix it. Fix it, yes. Yeah. We also had, through the Department of Culture and Miss Dolphin, a team of knowledgeable people of theater who will come and vet productions, see the standard and pa pass, you know, okay. yes. And this was before those productions went on stage? They didn't go on, no, they didn't Some go on stage. Some then didn't go on stage at all after they were vetted. <laughs> Some vex, you know, but then, <laughs> and they, um, I thought that was good. We had a good standard of delivery and people trying their best to do well you know, look well from, from, the, from the stage on. Um. Um, coming back to your um, time in education, what would you say stood out for you from that period? What, what is one of the most significant or a few of the most significant things that come to mind with regard to your period as an educator? 
my work at the Dolphin Government School, I was very successful in some, many of the children getting scholarships and going to bishops and queens. And that stood out for me because it was hard work and, you know, the parents were very supportive and thing. And after that, in education, I liked, um, we did a lot of workshops and outreach programs through being at the national, at the, the um, training college. We went, we would take students to Letem, I Charlton, and other places where they will see students and interact with teachers in those areas. And I think that stood out for me because it wasn't a, I was Georgetown bound. So when I got that opportunity, I liked doing that. Another thing that stood out in, for me for education was um, not Mashamani so much because although I interacted with them teachers, the teachers did well on their own, you know, and you just had to give them the guidance. But Sister Rose Magdalene had done, um, spearheaded the, um, before Califesto, mm -hmm. it was a Georgetown thing. And we went there and met actors, met singers, and carry on a little workshop and things like that. And that so I found th very... This is education outside of the, what I would call, quote unquote, academic subjects. Yes. Um, but I think it is as critical as the academic subjects. Yes. But in terms of your ability, one, to get children to become involved in these areas, and two, to take it into the regions, how do you think that worked out over that period? I think it worked out well, flatteringly, flatteringly well. Mm -hmm. Why? Because up to now, people will come and say, Miss Rogers, you remember me? You taught us to dance, you taught us to make our costumes. When you were in Bartico, we went to Bartico, wherever. Mm -hmm. And you know, I found the education there was very, very good, very good. And even though in Georgetown we had workshops, mm -hmm. and we took the workshops to schools, to teachers in schools in a region, like if we go to the West Bank, a number of teachers got there, and we were able to. So, so this was this was in a sense some level of teacher education happening all the time. All the time oh. in in the areas that in you had areas, studied. Yes. Okay. Um, what about education in things like theater? Was that hap I mean, I know the theater guild was the primary facility where uh, theater was being disseminated, but outside of the theater guild, what was happening? In the, I know Booker's had a cultural yes. um, area that they concentrated on, and I think a couple of other people. But Lynn, what else was what else was going on? Mm -hmm. And what was good there was that they were, we would we ha they would bring them down. We had um, uh, what is the word I want? Where they come together and compete and the, at the theater mm -hmm. Uh huh. Um, this was in drama. Drama. Drama festivals. Drama festivals. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's the drama festivals. Mm -hmm. And we didn't go up, they came down, but they had their educate you know, their exposure and their guidance for the theater guild there. That is when Frank Thomason was there. He worked with Guy Suko or Guy Mine? Guy Suko. Oh, he worked at Guy Suko. So the, the two major companies, and, and of course the two, those would, would have been the two major um, things that the country was producing, bauxite and sugar yeah. at the time. And Guy Suko would have been dealing with sugar, but they also, as I know, had across the um, sugar estates, yes. uh, clubs that, that promoted yeah. the arts. Mm -hmm. And then Guy Mine, you were saying, also had um, stuff that they were doing. Yes, in Linden, they brought Grays, I forgot, it was Grays somebody, but mm -hmm. they brought them, dramatic mm -hmm. group, and they came down. Very keen, very keen. Mm -hmm. 
And another education part that I assisted in was the children's section of the Theatre Guild workshop. Okay. What, what happened in that, in that section? You had the main producer was Eileen McAndrew. And, and she ran this workshop and you would be there to help doing the costumes and seeing them dance and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Now, you complete your sojourn at the Cultural Center, the National Cultural Center, after 17 years. And I know you have not been stopping at all. You've been continuing to do a lot of work. Um, tell me what are some of the things you've been doing since you left the Cultural Center? Since I left the Cultural Center, even though these things were still ongoing in my life, mm -hmm. I, Women's Artists Association, I came more active there. Mm -hmm. What do you do there? I'm the administrative when we have exhibitions and so I look after the exhibitions and administration mm -hmm. of what is going on helping with the the, girl, the um, president to, to do what, what they want or work. I did that. And, um, and the next thing I was in was with music, the music school. Miss Dolphin was the head of music in the Department of Culture. But when she came off, she was, she asked ABRSM, which is the Royal School of Music. The Associated Board of the Royal Schools of Music. And she suggested Mildred Lowe. Mildred Lowe had it, and then she left. She went, she migrated to America, and Mildred put up my name, and I suppose of my resume and they accepted, accepted me. Mm -hmm. So I've been doing that. What all does that time. entail? It and this of course is in the teaching of music. This the is largely teaching, about yes. teaching and the examination you organ, of Yes, music. you organ, the teacher, teacher, you have teachers. Mm -hmm. I don't teach. Mm -hmm. The teacher is thing, but we organize their applications mm -hmm. and send, and re, I relate I'm the local representative for, the for Guyana board. in there. Mm -hmm. And so I relate to ABRSM and send in their entry forms, their results, and things like that. Okay. Let's go, let's just go back mm -hmm. and let's look first at the music festival because I think that was very, very mm -hmm. keenly uh, contested. contested. Ms. Dalton used to bring teachers to that music festival to train them, and then they are able to go and prepare their students. Prepare their students. And <clears throat> so I don't know about the festivals themselves now. For instance, I'm involved in bringing a music examiner. In those days, she and her team would have done that. Adjudicators. Adjudicators for the festival. For the festival. Mm. So I'm not, Marlon Dewar and Mrs. Hunt, they were, and, um, Elaine Stevenson, they were the main, and Elise Arno, they were the main committee for that music festival. Everything went through them. Um, I know you're also doing some work with the Theatre Guild. Yes, I'm trying to. Mm -hmm. what, what, what are you attempting to do at the Theatre Guild? I used to help Jenny, the, ad, the administrator mm -hmm. there, you know. And if she is involved and she needs me, she will give me a call mm -hmm. and I'll go and That's do a stint of job okay. or so. Um, I'm sure that you've seen our educational arena change very much over the years. Uh, what do you think are some of the problems and do you think that there are solutions to some of these problems. What are some of the things you think we can do to get our educational level back to, I, I can remember at one point, we, we were considered the highest country in the Caribbean with regard to literacy. What I would hope is that they have the schools be more strong in having cultural education. You know, we used to have fairs and you have maple dancing and you had people coming in to talk to you 
and so also i am a strong believer that when the schools also had a close connection with church it helped the discipline of children you had people coming in to talk to you or you go to church and well i went to an anglican school so you go to church like all now it's easter this good this um easter period just before easter we go, one week one day you go to church and you had what is known as self-denial and things that built the character you know i think that is lacking in schools children are not i'm not very close now because the thing but i think that is lacking and i think too teachers are not as committed as we were simply because for instance we were when i went there i went and i took exams while i was teaching and i still got on i never left you know but they go to ug there are other influences that they would take on you know and um, thing and i think do for me the deportment of the teachers themselves is a great in incentive to children i know that from my experience and from the experience of people like miss pollard and this body and that body i know that is a great thing you must be a model must be a role model to your students in the class Ms. Rogers, thank you so much. I really appreciate your coming in and talking with us. Thank you so much for coming. And thank you for asking me.